Hello and welcome on this third video of the series Spring Security. So far we have seen how to do Spring Authentication Authorization using database where you took a username and password and dumped it into the database. You then retrieved that username password as a token and you were allowing user or authorizing user based on their roles to show different section of the pages. If you, are, if you haven't seen this video, you can check out the link up there. In the second video, we saw how to do that with JWT tokens. If you're not sure on how JWT token work, what is the purpose of JWT token? What are the advantages, disadvantages? You can look at the video up here. And in this video, which is called Spring Security with Social Login, you are going to learn how to log in your user using one of their social networks. For example, Facebook, Google, Twitter. But in this one, we're going to look at another one called GitHub. But the procedure is equal is exactly same for all of the uh, any social network of your choice. So we're going to maybe look look at uh, key clock in in a further video. But for today, we're going to only learn about social login with uh, GitHub. So before we uh, dive into detail, let's see what we're going to build today. Today we are going to be creating two pages, public and admin pages, and the admin page is behind an authorization server where a user has to authorize using their GitHub login. And once they authorize, I want to pull their username and I want to show it back on the admin screen. Okay, so the username is uh, shown over here. And now if I go back to index page by directly typing into the URL or by hitting the back button, it should work the same. Okay, so you can also, there's a logout button. And for now, if, if I have not logged out, I should be able to hit in back and forth. But if I've logged out and I try to hit back button, it would ask me to reauthorize, reauthenticate on the GitHub using my social login. So if I do that, I'm able to pull the information again. But if I log out, no matter what I do, either hit the back button or I hit the admin page, it should always ask me to reauthenticate myself and authorize what information I want from their account and to be used on the admin page. So let's see how to build this thing. All right. So let's start with a brand new project and we are going to be uh, getting three dependencies in there. So let me put this information. I'm going to call this project as social auth. Uh, let's put it over here. Social auth. And we are going to be leaving the group as is. Provide your own group name. Uh, artifact is going to be the same. And I'm we are using JDK 21. You can use 17 as well if you want, but I have 21. So I go in there and I need three, three dependencies. One is web. So I'm going to pull web. Second is the Lombok. The third one I want to use is Thymeleaf. So if you are, if you already have a, uh, say a page built in React or Swelt kit. So if you're using any of those two or, um, you know, you're using a view or something and you can build a page with that and you particular to make a call. So I'm, I'm just using Thymeleaf just to tell you how this thing is going to look like. So I'm going to pick up time leaf and I'm going to create the project over here. So while the project is being created, um, let's wait for a while and I'll fast forward the video. All right. So I have the uh, project open now. It's a brand new project. Nothing is in there other than the build.gradle file. So at this point, we are first going to touch our application YAML. So as you already know, if you're familiar, I like to call my file name as application.yaml file instead of properties. They just easy to read for me. Call it application YAML. And in this one, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to call this as spring application name. So spring application name and I'm going to call this as social auth. Okay. So um, now, now I've named that and now what do I need to do? I need to uh, give some information about time leaf. So I'm going to put in time leaf and basically all I'm telling is where can you find the HTML, how to read the HTML, what are the different kind of encoding. Okay, so I'm going to call this as prefix and here I'm going to put in class path templates. Do I have it right? I need to add a flash here, L-A-T-E-S. So I added the templates, now I need to Tell them that these are all be ending with suffix as dot html file they're all html files so if you are using mustache or something else right you go to call the prefixes accordingly and i'm going to put this this mode is equal to html these are standard boilerplate code if you're already familiar you can skip this but i'm just showing for people who are using it for the first time on how this thing works okay 
Next, I want to put it on a server uh, port 3000 and provide, I'm going to provide a context path. So I'm going to put in a server context path. So my path will be, let's call it slash social auth. That's my application name. So I'm just naming it like that. Next, I want to call it as port number also. So port number will be somewhere over here. And this I want to write on port 3000. So I'm going to put it as 3000. My mouse went away somewhere. Okay. So I'm going to put this as 3000. So my application.yaml is looks good. So right now what we're building is just basic public and admin page, which is accessible by everyone. And then we're going to see how to block it using, uh, put it behind our uh, security configuration and we're going to block the admin page. Okay. So just bear with me. Um, we're going to be rushing this through now. So I'm going to create a simple controller class. I would call this class as web controller controller and I'm going to put it in the controller package. So things get automatically created. I'm going to cancel this. Okay. So now here we, we want to put it under the rest controller, right? Controller. Okay. So now we, I have this, now I'm going to create two pages over here. One is called the text page and other we're going to call the as admin page, right? So let's go ahead and create those. So first, the first thing I'm going to do is, I, and both, both of these are get, get mapping now, you want to create a pose up to you, whatever you do, but I'm just showing a very simple basic example here, okay? And we're going to call this as public string. Let's call this page as, not the admin, I want to call this as public, right? Not the admin. Let's create public page first and slash, uh, slash public, and I'm going to call this as public page, okay? Very simple and here I'm simply going to be returning turn as public. Okay. And for this, I need to also go ahead and create the template for public.html. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing and now I'm going to put it as admin page and we're going to name this as admin. Okay. These days I, I'm not sure what's happening, but the newer version of IntelliJ, it seems to try to pretend AI specific where it tries to remember what I've done in the past and will try to create a method name based on its previous method that I've created in the past and which is why you'll see that sometime it, it tries to complete my whole code using one of my history of code that I've been working in the past. So I have to do a lot of backspaces. Okay. So, okay. So let's move ahead. So I'm going to call this as return admin. And I will uh, actually, okay, so this is going to be written admin, but in this one, uh, I want to show the name. So I'm going to put in a model, model, model. And over here, so what I'm going to do, so what we're going to do is we want to provide a name. So right now I'm just going to hard code the value here, name equal to coding with Danny. Okay. And now I'm going to add this model dot add attribute name. So if you see this, it <laughs> try to fill in automatically for me, which is cool. But sometimes it tries to pick up values from my past code, which I, which I hate. I, I don't know um, how the whole thing works in IntelliJ, but cool and sometimes irritating at the same time. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I also, also want to create a logout because as, as you would have seen, I have the logout as well. My, in the sample demo, which I showed how, what we're going to build. So I'm going to call this as logout. And this is a very standard logout. Okay. So I am going to put, this is going to be my logout and I want to again, keep it as string and what we, but in this one, I want HTTP servlet quest and HTTP servlet response, servlet response. Okay. So I have these two value and the third thing that I want to do is the, what do we say? The authentication. So for now, what I'll do is let's see what do we want to put over here. We are going to be using authentication. So for now, I'm just going to leave this because I'm not going to do anything. All I'm going to say is redirect to the index page over here. Okay. So I'm going to put redirect to login page, which is my index page. Okay. So I want to put this as index or login. If you see that login page, I, I created that that whole same thing for a, another project, which is why it brought in login, which is which I said is very irritating at times, uh, but also really helpful if you if you're trying to build something really fast. All right, so I have this, and now I need to go and create two more pages. I'm going to be creating a HTML called public dot HTML. 
and we we want to create another one called admin so new HTML file I'm going to call this as admin all right so cancel this and in these two we are simply going to be just printing out the title and some value that you need to go to the admin page as we've seen so I'm going to call this as public page we have, oh sorry not this one on the public.html I'm going to call this as public public page okay and what we're going to do is a over here we're going to be putting in that this is a public page so I'm just going to put a h1 over here and we're going to call this as public page okay next thing we're going to put on this page is that this is accessible by everyone so I'm just going to put in paragraph this page is accessible access verified accessible by everyone all right and then we want to give a anchor tag over here where we're going to put in href and what do you want to do we want to specify that my when i click on this thing it should go to the admin page okay so my admin page is on social auth admin all right so this is all we're going to put over here and i'm going to be specifying to admin page all right i think this should be enough i'm going to copy this whole thing and dump it in the uh, oh wait um, the other thing i want to put in over here is the href tag but i think i don't need that in the public i'm going to put in the admin okay so i need to use the model and uh, because i'm using timely so i want to use it. so one thing that i i'm going to add in the admin page is the html namespace so over here i am so i need to provide a timely dot all right so let me see let me remove this and i'm going to just put this as xml www dot timely dot all okay so i can't remember xml and s right i think that's that's the one we use right so time leaf for time leaf and i'm going to be specifying that this is http uh, i hope it shows up um, http www dot time leaf yes it's going to make me type just when, when you want it to you, you know use from one of your histories it's <laughs> it doesn't work but anyway so we are going to call this page as admin page so that's one thing that we want to do over here and i'm also going to call this admin and here what we want to do is we want to specify that um, you want to get the name that you're passing from the controller class right so we're going to call this as uh, welcome your name is and here we're going to use the span tag span tx and i'm forgetting how we used to call this as name hopefully this should yep this should this should work without any issues why is it throwing an error over here welcome your name is blah 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 oh i need to be closing one more tag over here i believe this this should work yep okay the last one we want to put in as a logout page so i'm going to put in as logout okay and let's go and start our application and see if everything is working fine all right so let's start our application okay and i will open my browser so i have let's clear this and i'm going to put in as http public so my public page shows up fine uh, let's click on the admin page admin page is also showing up fine i see this should be called logout so let's fix this let's go back over here and oh there's one more issue so this is not react to index we want to redirect to slash public so let's fix this as well before we fix the value on the admin page so an admin.html we want to say logout okay so let's restart quickly to confirm everything looks fine so this is going to be your uh, basic application on which you're going to secure the ad admin page and you're going to make sure that authentication is being done by your social networks so i'm just going to go over here admin page i can see logout button is showing it fine okay so everything looks good okay so now we are going to first learn how does social authentication works and then we're going to see how to implement that logic in our code and make sure that a customer is authenticating via github and we are able to redirect the page to the redirect the user to the admin page after they have uh, authenticated and have provided the authorization that you can use some of my information and we'll see that uh, how to do the logout because logout here you'll see if, if you haven't tried logout in any of your application you'll see what sort of issues you are going to run into okay so let's let's take a look at that 
Welcome to the famous slide. Uh, if you have been following, you'll see that this is the same format I've, I've been following, right? So if, if I go back on any of my any of my previous one, you you would remember <laughs> what I've been doing. So I've been just adding the same lessons over and over again in the same keynote. So nothing will change if, if you're watching from video to video. I'll try to create one whole video starting from the basic authentication all the way to Jot and social auth and key clock and everything at the end when I create these partial videos, okay? All right, so we want to do social authentication, but how does this thing work? Okay, so for that, we need to first understand what is social auth, okay? So think of social auth using Spring Security as another form of single sign-on, right? Uh, what that means is you have logged on your Google or GitHub or Twitter and now you, you don't want to go ahead and create another login for a different different website. So what this website do is uh, they, they say okay you, you can go ahead and authenticate yourself saying who you are using your Google or authentication or Facebook or Twitter whatever you want to pick in or whatever the website supports. So you're going to use one of those social uh, logins and you will be redirected back to the website saying that yes we have authenticated the user and now the user is supposed to uh, provide authorization that you can use my name the email or says if one of the so social network also captures your address you can also say hey get my address the advantage of th this is that people or the website who are trying to gather new user it is advantages for them in a couple of right so one thing you'll see is uh, that the number of users who are going to be signing up for your service is going to increase dramatically because they don't have to provide all of the information one more time when they're creating a brand new account because all of that information has been pulled in from one of these social networks and the author and the user who is the authorization provider said okay you can use this information and pass it on to the website who is asking for this particular information. So the new website, the client, who are, where the uh, users tend to log in, say, say my, my website is called uh, abc.com, okay? And ABC, if I was not using one of the social auth authentication, uh, social login, social platform to do that, I, what I would have to do, I would have to ask user, hey, go ahead and sign up, and I want a first name, last name, email, phone number, and address, okay? L lot of information, five, in total right so if I'm going to be typing those in it's going to take my time and people are so busy these days they, they don't want to spend time this is going to require me to do uh, provide all of this in information then on top of that even if they are ready to do that uh, some of the website will say okay uh, I'm first going to send you the OTP or I'm going to send a magic link to your email you click on that link verify will be redirected so a lot of time is wasted in that people are busy so <laughs> They, they want to do things fast so these websites okay if you don't want to do that i'll give you the option of uh, say google or uh, facebook you, you can authenticate and that you are xyz person and you stay at so and so location and you have this email and we will ask that using our information using our client id in secret we are going to take that authorization code and are going to get that information from the third party provider which is the social platform and say hey Dinesh wants wants us to get his first name last name email and stuff from you because he has authorized that and here's the authorization code and we are just going to fetch that information and we'll create his account in the background so next time when, whenever a user wants to lo log in they don't have to remember any of the password because all they're going to do is they're going to keep on logging using their google or github or twitter i'm pretty sure all of you have used it i don't want to go in deeper how the flow what screens are, are going to show up because anyway you're going to see over it but i'm pretty sure you guys are aware how things work i'm just giving you a background of what are the advantages for people who uh, for the website exactly why would they want to do that the biggest advantage is they do not have to save their user id password and do all of that do otp sending all that that is always being done that is all being done by the social platform they are the one who are going to hey you have turned on two-factor authentication so i'm going to send you an otp and uh, you put in the otp then i'll verify that you are who you say you are and you are authorizing the abc.com site who is asking for these in information from your account okay so that is one big advantage forget password reset password you don't have to worry about that because all of that is being handled by these third-party platforms okay 
So as I mentioned, what's in, in it for me, you don't have to create username, password. You don't have to remember different username, password for each website because all of these different platforms are dependent on your social logins, right? And it's a simple and secure. Right? This also simplifies and I was reading these numbers from these various websites where they claim that uh, there's a 28 to 32 or somewhere I saw almost like 60% where uh, the percentage, percentage of users signing up for your service uh, increases dramatically. I don't know how, how those numbers, uh, how true those numbers are. You, you can do your own research. But there is some truth to that, that when I see that uh, any of the website has a social login, I would try to log in with my social account. I don't want to waste time creating an account over there. So how does this thing work? How does the flow work? So let's take a look at this merry go -round. So pay close attention how the flow happens. Okay, so you are the resource owner and say you, you go on the client. So client here is the application. So say the application is called abc.com. Okay, or XYZ dot com uh, i don't know if the abc net network has a site so i'm just calling it xyz.com okay don't come back and sue me on this so you as a resource owner want to go on to a site called xyz.com where you don't have an account today okay so the first thing you want to do is you're saying hey give me give me the employee information say so that is what this website does it provides you the employee information so what what it says is okay if you want to do that you have to authenticate and authorize from the third party server so in our in our whole demo we will be using github as an example and we're going to write the code okay so what it's going to do is it is going to redirect you to the github login page where the github is going to say is going to show you a screen something like that uh, which you see on, on on your screen right now it'll ask you to log in with your username username and password your github login username and password so once we are done with that i hit the back button sorry so once you are done with that it is uh, the user is then going to enter that's step four so screen screen is sh shown to you in step three okay and then user is going to will be asked to provide their username and password so user then provides the their github username and password that's step five so once it's done then it's it is going to say hey the thezy.com is asking that provide me first name last name email phone number whatever else else we, they've asked for it so user will say yes so if if you see here right um over here i'm, I'm simply ask, asking for its name i could have asked for email what sort of repositories I maintain private ones and both the public one and do you want to authorize xyz.com to see all of that information so based on what all resources I have asked it will show up over here that hey he is also asking for email or he is also asking for phone number and stuff so you are going to see over here and if, if you agree with that you are going to click on authorize otherwise you can click cancel meaning that you cannot create an account over because you said I am not going to provide that information to you okay so as you you said yes okay so in that case you will be redirected back with an authorization code it could be a, a, a code which looks like a series of uh, alphabets and number what will happen is that authorization code the browser then will use that authorization code okay because it comes from the resource owner he's going to say hey i'm not going to give you my username and password for github but here is everything you need if you take this authorization code to the to the github so looking at that code it tells the github server that hey this authorization code so author server what it is going to do which is github it is going to say hey is this authorization code one is it valid that's first thing if it is valid what are the resources attached to that okay so in in our case we are saying that the i only want to get a username so i'm going to provide that information so server is then going to provide that information back to the client okay so client is go going to look at that information and then it's going to say okay you had asked for employee information i'm going to provide the in employee information so one thing you'll notice when you're looking at this authorization code is this authorization code does not look anything like your jot token meaning you will not be able to see information such as when this token is going to expire or what sort of resources or information is packaged in there so think of this as an opaque token which is just a string and number and only the authorization server knows what it contains and what it is asking for that's one big difference between jot token and the token which you're going to see over here in the social authentication okay so let's go ahead and 
make changes to a code so that we can start using github client as your uh, social login platform and block the user from accessing the admin page all right so the first thing that we need to do is we need to secure our pages and if you remember from the past videos we have to create a configuration file security config file or whatever class name you want to provide and we are we have to use the request matches to block some of the pages right so let's go ahead and create a security config class so over here i'm going to first go ahead and directly create a controller class over here um, but before that um, the thing which i need to do is i need to add uh, authorization OAuth 2 client class okay so why OAuth 2 client class because over here we are not the authorization server we are the client to the authorization server which is why if you go in here and you say i want to add org dot spring okay where is my spring framework boot okay and um now if if i if you just put in auth auth right come on just show up spring framework spring oh, okay i need to use ah there you go so if if you just search for what you'll see or to client or to authorization server or to resource server and what to auto configure auto, auto configure as you know from process of elimination we, we don't want to use that the choice is between the resource server authorization server or client so as, as i was explaining earlier we are not the authorization server so this one is out okay we are not the resource sub -sub server as well we are the client we are the client to github saying that hey i am the client i need to get information so this is the dependency which you have to add now go ahead and add our configuration class so i'm going to create my security config and i want to put this in um, config folder and here first thing we need to do is we need to provide our configuration class so i'm going to put in configuration and we're going to enable oh it's already there okay so we we have this and now first thing we need to do is we need to create a bean bean of what of security filter chain right so we are going to create a bean of security filter chain so in this case i'm going to provide public right when i wanted it and the first thing we want to do is http dot cs csrf and we want to disable the configurer configure and we want to re replace uh, set this value to disable okay so we want to say disable so this is already out there very good this is doing a lot of auto configure for me next we want to do is we want to use the authorize uh, http request authorize http request and now we want to say so over here what what i want to do now is i want to say that I want to say that I want a request matcher. Request matcher, what? First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our um, index page or the admin page. Let me just go back and check what did we create. So, my public page, I'm able to permit all. All right. Next, what, what do you want to do? We want to also make sure that our logout page is also available. Now, we're going to use the same for our admin page so i'm going to provide a slash admin and i'm not going to be looking at any sort of role server. so over here what i want to do is i want to say that this is an authenticated space correct and any other request which is coming in okay so far so good now what we want to do is this so if you provide this if you remember from the previous one you have to create a use user service that user service is going to look for information from your database you provide all that right but over here we are we are using uh, OAuth login using uh, social authentication right so what we're going to do is we are going to be using something called OAuth OAuth to login okay and over here we are going to provide OAuth I'm going to again give it a name OAuth to right so I we have created this so but what are we supposed to do over here so first thing is we have to tell it tell this thing that we want to do a login so let's see what our information for it so we have a login login page and in our login page we have to specify so if you remember the flow what 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 we're supposed to do whenever somebody comes in we want to send them to github's login page github authorization server login page right so for that okay next thing what what we do is we want to 
uh, use the user endpoint so user info endpoint and here we are we are again going to be providing user service user service and o auth to um, Actually, I haven't created that method yet. So I'm going to call this as OAuth to user service. Let's call this as OAuth to user service. In the past, we used to create a user service. So here again, we have to create a user service, but this is something uh, that comes built in as a part of your Spring Boot OAuth to client. Okay. You can overwrite the existing one, but we are going to use the uh, automatically provided class that uh, from the uh, Spring library. Okay. So this looks good. We, we, are, we are going to shortly create the auth or two service. And now we're going to do uh, create a logout. And in logout, let's call this as log logout. So I'm going to provide logout. So what I'm going to provide in the logout, we first we're going to provide a logout URL. That um, uh, what is the logout URL for you? So I'm going to provide slash logout. Okay. Next, we want to tell that if the logout is successful, what are we supposed to do? Okay, so I'm going to be providing a logout success URL first. So I'm going to say if everything looks good, then go to the public page. Okay. Next, I want to make sure that I'm invalidating the session. So whenever you, whenever uh, a user is authenticated on GitHub and has provided provide the authorization, right? So all of that information gets saved in the session in a cookie called JS session ID. So we have to make sure that whenever we are logging out, we are making sure that everything is invalidated, right? Next, if there is any sort of uh, authentication, we want to clear that too. So I'm going to do clear authentication and I'm going to mark this as true. And then we want to make sure we are deleting the cookies called J session ID. So J session ID. And the last thing I want to do is, I want to say permit all. So our security filter chain looks all good, right? Uh, but we're still missing this uh, method called OAuth service. Okay, so for OAuth service, we are going to go ahead and create a method. So over here, if you see, I am going to be simply returning new default OAuth user service. Okay, so if I go in this particular class, you, you can read how this thing works. Okay, and how the load user method is already in there. So basically, the user survey which you which used to uh, create earlier, right? You used to create a load user profile where you will be loading information from the GitHub. That's the same thing which is happening over here. Okay, so if if you follow, you'll be able to see. I'm not going to dwell in, into that, but you can actually override these values and put it into a, another user class if you want, and uh, use that over here. Okay. So right now we're simply going to use a default one. Okay, so now this is done, right? But uh, we still haven't created our GitHub client. All right, so I need to create an application first. So I'm going to go in there and click on my settings. And I'm going to go to the developer setting. And here I need to go on OAuth apps. So I already have a couple of things uh, created here. So for example, I'm going to go in this one, coding with Danny. And when you are creating a, a new brand new application, right? Actually, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and create one so that you are you somebody who is not uh, who is not aware on how these uh, applications are, are created, you'll you'll get to know. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new OAuth app. Okay, um, let's call this as test i think i already have test app let's call this as test app one okay and i want to copy the same value so i have to provide my home page right so my home page is actually public not index next i need to provide the authorization callback url so this is a standard url that um, you can see on the uh, github documentation page as well or and also on your uh, spring boot these are the standard uh, url so all the way up to your context path, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to be enabling a device, I'm simply going to register the client. So as soon as you're done with that, you will get a client ID. So I'm just going to save this client ID somewhere, somewhere on my, my VS code. So you can save this client ID, okay? So I got my client ID. Now I need to create a client secret. So once, once it's done, now what I need to do is I need to go and 
create the configuration in in my uh, application.yaml file so that I should be able to use the my client ID in secret and send that information along with my authorization code to fetch the information okay so what do you need to do I need to again uh, go to my uh, security authentication so I'm going to and what do we need to do one I need to first register my client so I am going to provide my registration as github so if you see here if, if I do control space to show what all is present it's not going to tell me anything so we have to type it manually that the value is going to be github now what goes in in here as soon as you provide this right? now I will start thinking it, it is looking for client name client secret and whatnot so I'm going to put in my client ID that I had created earlier right so okay so this is done what what else do, do we need to provide in here now the next section which I'm going to put in this is optional okay so I'm going to provide as under provider and again provider is not going to tell me uh, what all provider are supported I have to put it in there as soon as I put this information now I'm going to, I can go ahead and put all of this in information and these URLs are actually defined predefined for you especially for the provider that Spring Boot auto support you do not have to put this information for github you can you can essentially stop at this point and your code will work fine but there is a reason I'm adding when I come to uh, logout you'll see why I have added this uh, feature over it right so I'm going to put in token URI so which will tell me that what is my token URL so this is the place where uh, application is going to send that token and it's going to say hey uh, make sure that the token is valid and has the associated resource that the user has already granted and the next one is that i am going to provide the user information uri this is the again the um, i'm asking that give me the user information so once i have this i am going to be dumping this information over here okay so with this with this now i believe my code should be working now but as i was saying right i wanted to show you uh, the class to provide yes so why I was saying that the you don't have to essentially put this information because Spring Boot this is the the client which we added right Spring Boot by default supports Google GitHub Facebook and I believe Okta as well out of the box and if you see here this URL authorized URL token URL user your, these are by default already set up for me so which is why if I would have skipped this whole thing my code would have worked without any issues okay so uh, let's let's exit let's run our application again and see if everything is working fine or not so now what should happen we are going to be looking at the public page that the public page works fine and then as soon as we click on the admin page it should take me back to the github and I've cleared my github session so you, you will be able to see the login page from github and pay attention to the urls how the redirection is happening okay so if i if i turn this thing on right now okay i'm going to go on the network so you should be able to see how the calls are working right so when i do do this you'll see nothing is out there now when i click on the admin page it will redirect me to the github page okay so i'm going to be uh, putting in my value again so now as you can see I am on my admin page correct and if I do back button and I if I want to go back to my from public back to admin I should be able to come over here okay hopefully I should be able to see the values now so if I go and inspect network and if I do this I'm going to click logout one more time go back to the admin page ah there you go this is what, what I want to show you if you see how the call actually went by this is the reduction which is happening right so from my public page I want to um, I want to go back to um, github authorization so here I'm, I'm uh, passing the client ID which I have I pass the scope by default the scope which I'm passing is for user so you'll see that I'm only trying to read user if I wanted to get the user's email phone number whatever uh, github saves today I could have asked for those so the scope here is read user where I'm saying that if the user authenticates ask user that he is okay to provide their user name information so their user will uh, will contain user object will contain what their name right and then 
redirect back to the URL social log log over to code GitHub, which is which is a value which I have defined in my uh, YAML file, right? And here is the code which I got back when I when I got authenticated when I said that this is my user ID password for GitHub, I got back a code over here. Uh, which is this particular value and this is the code which will be sent back which my client client is my social auth application which is going to go back to the authentic server and say here is the information you return back the um, the value that is the username back to me so that I can show it on the admin page so this is how the whole flow looks like okay now one thing one thing you'll see is my logout is acting funny okay I did log out, but when I click on admin page, it is automatically taking me back to the admin page. It didn't, it didn't exactly log out, right? So what really is happening is if you, although I am cleaning up my code over here, right? If I look at the web controller, when I say go to the logout, redirect back over it. So what couple of things I need to do, I need to go back and uh, make sure that my session is being cleared because I am asking that you go to the logout screen logout over here okay so we need to make sure that we are cleaning up the request and response but even that has a small issue that we'll see it will work only one time okay so um, let me go back to my page again so over here what, what you need to do is you first need to make sure that you are cleaning up your value so what we need to do is now we we are going to say if the if the user is authenticated right so for authentication you'll see that there is no uh, authentication OAuth 2 sort of object in it right so we need to go ahead and add uh, add that or inject that authentication token class over here okay so I'm going to say also provide me OAuth 2 <laughs> OAuth 2 authentication token okay so OAuth 2 authentication uh, there is a token class authentication token okay so uh, let's call this get a smaller name easier to pronounce okay so authentication okay that's what we're going to call this okay so what we need what what we're going to do is we want to make sure that if this if this um, uh, value is actually present if this value is present meaning it 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 has some value in there then we need to empty that value okay so if we need to say that if authentication is not equal to null then we need to make sure that our security context logout handler logout method is called logout and what do we want to do we want to make make sure that we are creating a uh, uh, passing all, all of this information so that any valid session and all that which we are in security config get executed okay so with this my code should work fine right and we'll see so there is a slight nuance that you need to be aware of so let me go back over here so I'm going to go back to my public page I'm going to click on my admin page it came back I click on logout good if I click on admin one more time you see that it didn't it didn't really do anything over here no matter what, what I do okay to click this admin one more time and you, you can keep trying and you even if you see in the um, in the network to see what exactly is happening if I click here I click logout and I click go to admin page again you can see that the my authorization code is already uh, uh, coming back and uh, I am actually getting the information back this is because um, the um, session at the github end is not getting cleared right so what we need to do in that case is we have to uh, go and uh, look at something called prompt equal to consent so if i just search for this particular value prompt equal to consent so whenever you have to like uh, provide the logout in information right you need to make sure that whatever url that you you're providing for authorization you are also saying that every time you are uh, when a user has been logged out make sure that you are again asking for their consent so this is one small piece of information that you need to add in your url so where are we going to add that one is you can you can 
uh, put it put it in like this but a simpler way is you can go ahead and add this information prompt equal to consent in your authorization so this is for Okta right so for us I'm just going to copy this value prompt equal to consent and we need to go ahead and um, add this value in two places one is in my security config where where I provide the logout URL uh, logout URL and here I'm going to add prompt equal to consent and second place is application your yaml so based on the documentation right you are only supposed to be providing this information at this at this point which is why when i when i said that there is a reason why i'm adding this because i need to add prompt equal to consent this is by default i don't know why spring hasn't done that but um uh, you need to you need to override this provide uh, provider github and blah blah, blah and have to add this value over and now when I restart my application again and now if I go back and access my public link so now if I go and click on admin page you would see that it has asked for me because I had logged out right so I'm going to just click authorize we're going to do, do this one more time because my session was already saved I'm going to click on logout now if I click on admin page you'll see it is now asking for that particular information okay so I'm going to click on fetch XHR Let's, let, let's do this one more time. I want to show you what exactly is happening. Okay, so I'm just going to click this. And now I'm going to click here, authorize. Since I my GitHub login is already there, it, it didn't ask me for my username and password one more, but it, it will ask you for login if, you're, if your GitHub session is all, but when I say GitHub session, I'm talking about that if, you, if I open my github.com, github.com, you would see that my I'm already logged into my account, which is why I didn't ask for username and password. Okay. Um, but it did ask, showed me the author, authorization uh, screen for over there, right? And if I click on, um, if I click uh, back the, I, I want to access the public page one more time. And I want to go back again, admin page. This is still working for me. And if I, if I go back to my admin page one more time and I click over here, you'll see everything works exactly fine when I click logout now I'm logged out and again it is going to ask me for my authorization so this is how you can um, implement your social login if it was uh, say um, Google click go ahead and change this value with Google and I can just skip this whole thing as is but it, but because you also have to add your uh, logout screen you should be providing this prompt equal to consent or you can follow the um, follow, follow the way that uh, that is defined on the Spring Boot authentication page where, where you are going to be providing this customizer and you're going to be passing this prompt equal to consent so if it is Google if it is Twitter all you need to do is just provide your client ID in secret all the all the platform which are which are supported by um, your Spring Boot right so if I if I go in there I want to check what all is if I wanted to use Twitter what I would have to do is then I would have to provide provider equal to Twitter and then replace the value with twitter.com if you have multiple providers you can just continue to add register for Twitter and then add like say for example I would have I would have also wanted one for github as well say github and Twitter right so if I if I want to provide that you will see that again I have to provide two different values okay because you you will see that many many of the applications today uh, have login with Google login with github login with LinkedIn right so for each of those you would have to add their client ID in secret this is how you can just keep on adding as a uh, as an array of registration so I hope you like this video if you did uh, do let me know what is the next uh, piece you want in the spring security I am planning personally planning to add um, keycloak how to do authentication with key club so do watch out if you love this video i would love to hear back your comments what you liked what you didn't like i typically do uh, hands-on coding so sometimes i some not sometimes my videos are always long it takes me at least uh, 12 to 18 hours just to record a video and another uh, 12 to 18 to just uh, go back and clean it up so it takes a lot of effort and a comment means a lot. I would want to hear back uh, what other thing other than Spring Security you want to uh, see. Thank you.